And so the, the quick scenario here is there's a CTO. And they're overseeing both hardware, software, and DevOps for the functions of their, their organization. And they're trying to build... Tra- the way they stated the problem was like, we're trying to shift our engineering organization to become more customer-centric. And I think everybody was sort of struggling with sort of the the ambiguity of, of like dealing with culture where it can be a little bit more invisible. I was wondering if you could share a little bit more about that making that shift to a more customer centric culture and, and what that might look like within an organization at sort of the team or org level. Making that culture transition is, it's a, it's a big undertaking. It takes, again, continuous investment to make that shift and it takes a lot of support. I think one of the most powerful tools is to really help everybody involved understand that their perspective, their version of the truth is not necessarily reality for for the customer. So we all have a lens that we have on a situation based on where we stand in in that environment. So as an example, if I'm standing in the middle of the woods, I I don't see the forest. If you're standing across a field and you're looking at the forest, you have a different context. You have a different vantage point. And so when we start to look at building customer-centric organizations and helping uh, technology leaders really uh, develop uh, that culture and that practice, one of the key things that we really start with is helping them understand empathy. And how do you actually start to build empathy within your organization? And so it has to go beyond, I think, talking about it. I think you have to find ways to actually integrate and create experiences for your team so they can live it. Uh, A really good example is we were working with a group and uh, they support hospitals. And we came in and we said, well, how much time have you actually spent in the hospital with patients? The answer was never. You know, our, our, our users are doctors and they're nurses. We're like, but doctors and nurses are using your software in the context of serving patients. And they never thought of that. And so instead, what we did is we made some calls and got some, was able to get some participation and from a couple of, of organizations. And we brought leaders into the hospitals to shadow nurses and physicians and to sit in rooms like the ER and listen and just pay attention. And all of a sudden you saw their entire world shift on how their product was being used and they because they could empathize with it and then they could personalize it as well. They're able to build individual alignment for those that could you know, then reference back to a moment maybe they had been in the hospital or needed care or been sick or they'd, work with a team and they would start to share stories, you know, about, well, this was my experience when I was sitting in the ER and this was my experience when my, you know, son or daughter was born or this, you know, they were able to start to then find a connection and recognizing our software is being used in all these instances. And this is the different scenarios and environments that our end users are are dealing with. And We're selling to the IT side of an organization, but they're only buying if we can actually create value for the organization, which means supporting these incredible people who are providing these care. And so using that lens of empathy to help create a culture change to becoming customer centric, to understanding how you can create more value and again, coming back to how you understand the impact that your work makes on others is an incredibly powerful tool. And I think that uh, when organizational leaders who have that, uh, are sitting in that role of CTO or, or other roles similar, can integrate empathy as a practice uh, into uh, the technical side of an organization, it's incredibly powerful. Absolutely. So where we were struggling with, because it came up, you know, spend, spend time with folks that are, are using your, your product was something that it was like, if you're not doing that, that's like a gold, you absolutely have to, like it's non-negotiable. Sure. Are there other sort of systems or ways to operationalize uh, that, that consistent practice of empathy with the, the folks that are using it? Because like with the stories you're sharing, like that makes a huge difference on what you choose to focus on as an organization, which then makes a huge impact on the people that are dependent on your product or service and what you're doing. This goes back to 
really understanding in your product if we're at the empathetic layer of like for every user flow or function of your product, what's the intended outcome? It's amazing how few products are actually mapped to that standard. And if you can do that, you can start to very easily see, well, who is contributing and participating and delivering on that experience that the product is, is offering? And what is what is necessary to drive improvement in the product? And so that's a really powerful tool um, for, for an organization to have clarity on, because then you can start to build practices around it. So if we focus on uh, first-time use of the product, well, who's responsible for that? Well, that's usually a combination of maybe sales and you've got let's say you have a, an, an engineer team or a customer success team that's involved, you know, this is all an opportunity to start to say, if, if we're doing this hands-on, what does this look like in order to, you know, move closer and closer to this intended outcome? How do we build a listening mechanism into the organization, into the way that we work to drive outcomes? How do we break down the silos where maybe you have a UX designer who's responsible for research and then they're supposed to bring those insights to engineering? Best practices would would say, well, your product manager and your PM and an engineering lead should be doing customer research collaboratively. That that's actually shouldn't, there shouldn't be a filter mechanism in that if, if you can afford that opportunity to do that kind of deep dive and continuous discovery. 